These tourists have just seen the marvel of Machu Picchu, but at this moment they are more intrigued by a young boy who can run faster than a bus. Plunging down the Peruvian Andes, he races the bus from level to level. Life is difficult in the highlands of Peru, but this teenager mixes wits with muscle to earn a living. My name is Fortunato Bravo Alvarez, and I am 15 years old. I earn my living running through the mountains around Machu Picchu. I also guide the tourists through the old city of my people. Perhaps the archaeologists who study the ancient Inca city would take issue with Fortunato's scholarship, but who among them can tell the stories with the pride of a young Indian who still sees a city where his people flourished when North America was a primal forest. Fortunato's father drank and forced the boy to leave school to earn money for liquor. His father died and his mother has returned Fortunato to school where he must catch up, the biggest and oldest child in his class. Fortunato is a member of the fastest growing population group in the world. Especially in developing countries such as Peru, the youth population will have doubled by the year 2000. Still he runs. For sometimes school is not the only answer for a young man who must compete with his wits to make a place in the world. Yo empecé a correr de los 10 años. Me falta un año para dejar de I started running when I was 10 years old and soon I must stop. But first I have an obligation to teach the children so they can continue to please the tourists by running and shouting goodbye. Diciendo goodbye. The responsibilities of maturity mark an end to childish things. Yet for youth, there can be wonderful times when the child reappears before the adult condemns him to the past forever. Belfast, Northern Ireland. Catholic against Protestant. Neighbor clashing with neighbor. Young and old, killing and dying. Mary Kiley is a Catholic. She is 20, a medical student at Queen's University. Her brother was killed at the age of 18 by Protestant gunmen. Jacqueline Moore is a Protestant. She is 18, a clerk at an advertising agency. She and Mary Kiley have become close friends. My 
My brother was shot dead coming out of Mass almost 10 years ago. As he was leaving the church, there were two gunmen at the steps and they just fired point blankly into the crowd. And Jared was hit. I can't let hatred dwell and grow in my heart because of what happened. I have to forgive. If I can let peace and hope stay in my heart, then anybody can. It starts with me and I hope I can spread it to other people. This wall divides Catholic and Protestant sections of Belfast. But Mary and Jackie work together to destroy what it stands for. They do this by bringing together young people, both Catholic and Protestant, in hopes of reaching them before they have been burned by hatred and prejudice. For Northern Ireland, because not only are we in the minority wanting peace, but we are the parents of tomorrow. And if we can do something, perhaps, to overcome the situation, then the world and this place will be a better place to live in. Because violence ends where love begins. And I don't mean just love on the outside, I mean it on the inside. Mary Kiley and Jacqueline Moore are not alone. Throughout Northern Ireland, young Catholics and Protestants want peace. And many of them gather here on the coast of County Antrim at a missionary community called Corimila. said in the song, peace will come, and if we believe not only in ourselves but in others, it will come. And we have to let it begin here in our hearts. We have to let it begin with me. On a small rural island in the Sea of Japan, an ancient art form is being revived by a group of athletic young musicians and dancers called Kodo. The word means heartbeat, the thunder of their powerful drums. The group called Kodo lives a Spartan life, for they seek excellence, not comfort. Aichi Saito, 21, arises before five every morning. For these young Japanese feel that the drama of their art is rooted in rigid discipline and physical conditioning. Every day, Aichi runs 10 kilometers around the island to strengthen him for the demanding drumming. young men and women live not in a museum of ancient music, but as performers who have combined the art of the past with entirely modern drama and creativity. Some of Kodo's drums weigh close to half a ton, and to play them gracefully with sticks the size of baseball bats requires the strength of an athlete, yet the deftness of a musician. 
自分から何かやろうっていう意思が大切です。Aichi says, the vital thing is to have the will to want to do something well, and it is important to listen carefully to the advice of your elders, not in a perfunctory way, but to take it to heart and apply it to your life. Everybody, master drummer and neophyte, shares equally in the tasks of the Kodo commune. We use traditional Japanese instruments, but we are not simply trying to preserve folk art. Composers write new music for us. And we perform with modern orchestras. We also compose our own music. For as a group, we are trying to express with our bodies and drums the things that we feel inside. Top from which some can look both back to the past and ahead to the future. These people are African refugees. We want to go home, they shout. They have come here to a camp in Rwanda because they no longer have any homes. This girl, Melanie Kasandi, was chased from her home by soldiers. She is the only means of life for her five younger brothers and sisters. Her mother was already dead of tuberculosis, and her father died a month after the family reached this camp. She is 15. The camp has a school in the shade of a tree, and Melanie insists that her little family attend. She, however, has no time. She says, we have had to live in the bush for two years now. We fled across the border when the soldiers came. But I can't hate soldiers, for the ones here in Rwanda welcomed us. Still, I wish we could return to our homes. These women are adults, married and with their own families. If Melanie is fortunate, she will become one of them. But today, her life is limited by her responsibilities. Melanie finds strength in religion, and twice a day she prays with the children. The family sleeps in a single tent, but sometimes Melanie is gone long before dawn. When there is no food, she must walk to a village two hours away to find work in the fields.
Often there is no work. Then she is forced to wade deep into a snake-infested swamp for reeds with which to weave mats and baskets. It takes three days to make a mat for which she is paid enough to buy food for one meal. Melanie gave up her childhood and she will give up her womanhood as well. With not a single relative among the 25,000 people in the camp, she can turn to no one to take over the children and let her go on with what should be her life. Do you think I'm going to stay unmarried? I will find a man. Food is the focus of the refugee's life. When it runs out, Melanie and the oldest children do without. Every two weeks, she and the others trudge to the distribution center and hope there is enough flour and grain, and perhaps even a little powdered milk. For some, like Melanie, life is a path that leads from childish ways straight to adulthood. They are the unfortunates for whom there is no youth. Sergei Bufka is a world champion and a new husband. At the age of 20, Sergei Bufka raised the world pole vaulting record seven times. How high can he go? Bubka remembers a Russian proverb, first do it, then say it. The war memorial in Donetsk, the Ukrainian city where he and his wife live, recalls those grim years when an entire generation of Russian youth was decimated. But for Bubka, life is far kinder. <laughs> Sergei says, I love pole vaulting because it is the most difficult form of athletics. The vaulter must be able to run fast, jump hard, be physically strong, and be a good gymnast. There is no other sport that requires so much. And because of that, it is one of the most beautiful forms of activity, not only in athletics, but in the world. I like the field, and competing makes me very happy. Sergei knows that striving to be the best begins with the child if it is to end with the champion. But that needn't mean the pursuit of excellence becomes a joyless job. Sport is meant to be fun. <laughs> Sergei does not allow sport to consume his life. For now that he is married, he has someone as important as any world record. The mind is a muscle too. Bubka's concentration can be so complete that he no longer hears a roaring crowd, thinking only of the details of his vault. Bubka's coach, who has been with him since Sergei started vaulting when he was 10, saw world championship potential in the boy from the very beginning. Sergei says, vaulters achieve their best results after the age of 25, 
so I know I haven't reached my peak. I plan to keep vaulting another 10 years. For Sergei Bubka, using only his skill and strength to lift himself free farther above the earth than was ever thought possible is a form of self-expression. Were there no prizes, no medals, no titles, he would do it nonetheless, for he competes with himself. This is a poor neighborhood in New York City. For a young person growing up here, life can be either a challenge to be met or an injustice to be suffered. Anthony Avery has accepted the challenge. He coaches the children's choir at his church, though his days are busy at high school and work. Education can be the equalizer for the disadvantaged, but fortunate are those who have the opportunity to make that choice. In much of the world, the rapid growth in the youth population during the last decade and a half of this century will far outpace any increase in educational facilities. Anthony sings in the Andrew Jackson High School Gospel Choir, and he makes time for the frequent rehearsals of what has become well known in New York as a superb high school chorus. Jobs become scarcest for the young, who are often unskilled, yet must adapt to the vast technological and economic changes that today affect employment opportunities all over the world. After school, I work eight hours as a full-time security guard. I'm working right now helping myself as well as my family out financially and putting a little way to attend Morehouse College as soon as I graduate from high school. I plan to be a music major because I like to teach kids. One of Avery's neighbors, a 62-year-old woman, is retarded. She is usually tended by her sister, but often Anthony helps. How was your day? Huh? How was your day? Not too bad. And you too hot. Too hot. It is, right? Yeah. <laughs> In some way, she's unable to help herself. So whenever her sister does go out or on vacation, I do stop in and see how she's doing. Can I have a little ice cream after this, okay? Okay. If people stop helping each other, number one, there would be no love. And once there's no love, there's nothing but hatred. Hatred causes violence and nothing would ever come together, nothing would ever join, nothing would be peaceful. Hey, let's sit down and eat together, okay? Yeah. All right. The world's teeming urban areas have long been magnets for youth. The risks are great, but the rewards can be even greater. Youth, they shall inherit the earth. Yet it is a crowded and contentious world we leave them. As their numbers grow, so do their needs, and so do their contributions, their enthusiasm, their vigor, their unwillingness to accept the barriers of prejudice. As children yesterday, they needed us to help them grow, 
as young people today, we need them to help make the world a better place tomorrow.